One thing that you will maybe have uh, come across is the idea that statin medications may cause muscle pain. And if you look on the internet and you look up statin medications or statin tolerance, you'll get over 3 million hits, which tell you that statin medications can cause muscle pain. Um, so what researchers have done in previous studies was they wanted to look at patients who stopped taking med statin medications because of the pain that it was causing them. And so what they did in this study, known as the Samson trial, was that they recruited 60 patients who previously stopped taking statin medications because of statin-related pain uh, that they found unbearable and that was not um, uh, beneficial to them, uh, didn't, far out, didn't outweigh the benefits of the medications itself. So what researchers did was they grouped individuals into three interventions. There was the group that was receiving the statin medications. There's the group that received the placebo, which is medication that's meant to look like real medication, but really there's nothing in it. And finally, they gave the individuals four empty bottles of, well, nothing, air. And if we move on to the next slide, you'll see what the results were for this study. What they did was they asked patients to start a new bottle every single month. And of course, these patients didn't know the difference between whether they were taking their actual medications or whether the pill that they were taking was a placebo. If we click on the slide a few more times, you'll get a visual representation of what this study looked like. As you can see, there were three different types of bottles, but of course they weren't labeled. They had no idea what was in them. And essentially after every month, patients were asked how they rated their pain on a score of one to 100 after every single month. So I bet you're curious what the results were. Well, we'll find that on the next slide. First, before we go into the results, it's important to understand what the nocebo effect is. The nocebo effect essentially is the phenomenon where the act of taking a pill makes someone feel worse rather than better. And what they found from this study was that the individuals that were not taking pills they had a baseline score of about 8 out of 100 in terms of their pain level. Now, when they looked at the placebo group as well as the statin group, they found that their scores were 15.4 and 16.3 respectively. Now, when they ran the, ran the results, they found that there was no significant difference between these two results itself, and that the placebo group and the statin group essentially reported the, main, the uh, same degree of symptom severity. And all in all, the researchers were able to conclude that 90% of symptom burden from statins was actually elicited by the placebo medications itself. So this, stu this study is really interesting because what you can sort of conclude is that the implications of this trial is that the pain that the patients were experiencing is of course real, but most of it is actually due to the nocebo effect, which seems to be elicited by the act of taking the pill, not necessarily the ingredients in the statin medication themselves. And so if you move on to the next slide, you'll sort of learn the takeaway from this study and why we wanted to show it to you, is that statin medications are life-saving medications and that it's important for you not to stop your medications without consulting your physician and you're re reviewing your blood work with them. Your lab results tell a story and your medications are working to try and get you in the optimal ranges that your body wants to be in. So if you have any concerns about medications, always discuss with your doctor before making any changes yourself. Dr. Kearney, did you want to add anything about that? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. These were people that had intolerable symptoms. These are people that could not take a statin that got really sore within a couple of weeks a uh, therapy on average. And they were given either real pill or fake pill. They didn't know about that. And at the same pain, they're also given a jar of just an empty jar. And so when they were, when they knew they were taking nothing, they felt better. They didn't feel perfect because they all, pain is pain. Uh, in fact, if you make it to 50 plus, uh, I have pain every day of my life. So I'm aching pain. That means I'm still alive and still kicking. That's good. Uh, you know, we, we, we get achy and things of that nature. We have some aches and pains, arthritis. I get, I get that. But it was really remarkable. These are people that had really terrible limiting pain. And the pain's real. And the pain is just as common on a fake pill or a real pill. So, uh, and this is not the first time this was done. This was said on multiple times. And the reason that's so important is that when you stop these life-saving medications, you have more heart attacks, you have more strokes, and you die. And, and so, um, I think it's really important to look at your your psyche and things that nature. Are you just not a pill person? Some people listen. I get it. I just want natural approaches. I don't want to take any pills. So thank you, Doctor Kern. You please don't give me these pills. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing. And and that's okay too as well. But when you look at the power of these medications, if you get your LDL cholesterol down from four to one, you decrease the risk of having a heart attack or stroke by sixty percent in five years. So you have to decide that's worth it to you or not. And really finding out for sure if it's the medication or the thought of taking medications. And uh, we're, we're involved in a project about this. And if you want, we can actually try to uh, give you fake pill, real pill, deceive you and find out if it's really the concept of 
the act of taking a pill or just just the thought process. Now, this is not a replacement for lifestyle changes. It's saddened to hear that most people don't want to do the work that's necessary to, to, to be on lifestyle changes. 8% of your cholesterol is made by your liver. 20% is what's in your diet. But, you know, you can influence that quite a bit. So, so to me, this is really a fascinating story. And I encourage everybody to look at a couple of videos. One is called the Statin Debate. And that's actually kind of something to, to think about how, how we're influenced. And um, uh, so, so thanks, Stuart. So from research, we've come to learn that for every one millimole reduction um, of your cholesterol, this is associated with a corresponding 22 to 23% reduction in major vascular events. Furthermore, there's a 20 to 25% reduction in having a heart attack or a stroke. Um, as we mentioned previously, uh, Dr. Kernu has his optimal ranges uh, of 3111 for your total cholesterol score. Um, and as you can see, those are numbers that um, are lower than what is typically considered the average. Um, because we're not only trying to be average, we want to optimize your chances of living a long and healthy life. So overall, research has showed us that a greater reduction in your LDL, which is those lousy cholesterols that we don't like, will lead to a greater protection from having a major cardiovascular event in the future. Now, according to Harvard Medical School, the benefits of statin are extensive. For example, they have anti-inflammatory properties, they improve vascular function, they help to stabilize the cholesterol-laden um, arterial plaques that build up in your blood vessels, they inhibit platelet buildup, they reduce the thickness of your blood, and all in all, as a side benefit, they also reduce the risk of having a stroke. So, all in all, statin therapies offer many significant cardiovascular events, um, which far outweigh the potential risks, which um, many people seem, seem to sort of point to whenever they consider the drawbacks of statins. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's important to understand this. So, um, if your average cholesterol is around, let's say, five, five and a half, let's say it's five. So you you start off with an LDL cholesterol of three point five. Well, if your LDL cholesterol is from three point five to two point five you lower your risk by, by 23%. And if your LDL goes from 2.5 down to 1.5, you get an additional 20% reduction. Um, so you can see for every one millimole reduction of LDL cholesterol, your risk of heart disease and stroke falls by about 20% or so. And there's no threshold. Lousy cholesterol is lousy cholesterol. There's nothing good about LDL cholesterol. And so, so to me is that in very high-risk people, people who've had more than one heart attack, or if you had one heart attack, or if you have diabetes, I would want my LDL cholesterol to be less than one. Um, so if you want to stop at two, terrific. But from going from LDL cholesterol two to one, you actually lower your LDL cholesterol by additional 20% or so. And again, it's independent of the starting baseline cholesterol values. Can you get LDL cholesterol too low? No, lower is always better. And for some people, I'm glad to erase LDL cholesterol from the, from the planet. It's like saying is, how many COVID cases do you want in your environment? None. Uh, LDL cholesterol is just bad cholesterol. You don't need it. All your cells can make its own cholesterol, except for mature red cells. So each cell can make its cholesterol it needs. So you don't need LDL cholesterol in your circulation.